So this here is watchOS 26, and it's just released into public beta. Now, I've been using it over the last month or so across all sorts of bikes and runs and other workouts to see how well it works, including most notably its new marquee feature, Workout Buddy. Now, I will still briefly go over some of the other watchOS 26 new features, including the liquid glass and some of the other components there, but I'm going to focus a lot on the new AI-powered workout buddy, including where it works great and where it falls a little bit a little bit short. Now, the very first thing to know is this is now available in public beta, and this will end up on production devices in the September timeframe. Uh, now, in the case of watchOS 26, it is available in all the models that you see listed right now on the screen there, plus, of course, whatever other watches Apple launches in the September timeframe when they typically launch new watches. So the main non-sports feature here is the new liquid glass UI. And of course, that really starts on the iOS side with this like glassy-like look to it. And then from there, it creeps down into the watch side in a barely sort of there kind of way. As you can see, as I go through this, probably the most notable scenario where you're gonna notice that like new UI is actually just the pin unlock screen. That is probably the best example of the liquid glass. Otherwise, when it comes to the watch side of things, liquid glass is super toned down and you would be unlikely to notice it in most cases. It just feels, it feels natural, which is a good thing, but it doesn't feel as though it's a major change from the past. And that makes sense given the much smaller screen size here. And of course, the small processing side of things that probably limits uh, some of they can do without draining the battery too fast. Now there are roughly about 10 or so non-sports features uh, that have been added as part of watchOS 10. I'm just going to throw them right there. They are mostly just ones that you can quickly read out. That said, I will note probably my favorite one, which is that the Notes app is now on the watch. Uh, so if you use the Notes app across your other devices, your iPhone, your Mac, etc., uh, now it'll go ahead and sync those notes to your watch. You can create new notes as well as read existing notes, but you cannot edit existing notes. Uh, I use Notes all the time. I use them out when I'm doing uh, shooting and stuff like that to have a list of what shots I need. I use them at the grocery store, etc. So having those sync from my phone straight into the watch where I can easily access them is awesome. I do though wish I could find a way to edit them so I could just simply cross things off on lists, uh, but there isn't an obvious way to do that. Okay then, so let's get into the workout bits, starting off with a new workout interface. So when you open up the workout app, you're going to notice things are different. There are no longer kind of the three uh, different blocks of the workout types you can see there and you can scroll between them. Instead, you're just going to see one workout type on the main page there, and as you scroll up and down using either the digital crown or just your finger to swipe through that, you'll see all the other options through there. I'm kind of mixed on this. Uh, when it first came out, I was like, yeah, I'm not really in love with this. And even now, I think the main issue is that sometimes like getting it exactly where you want to on the scrolly thing before it disappears is a little bit finicky. Hopefully though, it's something they can fix by the time we get to September. Uh, it's definitely better than it was when it first came out. And again, that's the whole point of beta is to improve this sort of thing. Now, the main piece here is actually those four little dots that you see in the different corners. This is essentially categorizing all the settings you used to have for workouts into four distinct pretty logical buckets actually. So starting off in the upper left-hand corner, that is all of your workout views. So your data pages, data metrics, things like that. That is all up there. All of your settings for data pages and what you'd see on those screens, that's all in the left-hand corner. In the upper right hand corner, that is all the things that can cause you suffering and pain, notably structured workouts, uh, as well as any sort of workout goals that you might have. So this could be, for example, distance goals or time goals or calorie goals. And you can go into both the pacer as well as the race route features. Again, all things that help you drive towards completion in generally probably a painful way. Next in the lower left hand corner is music. And in particular, there's a new feature here, which is the picked for you option. Uh, this allows you to go ahead and have it automatically start a playlist when you start your workout. So as soon as that workout starts, it begins that playlist. Uh, and then it creates this playlist on the fly dynamically. Apple says they'll pick the music tone based on the workout type, for example, a HIIT workout or yoga, et cetera. But it won't be taking into account things like if you have an interval workout loaded up or any other kind of thing like that. It's purely based on the workout type as opposed to the content of the workout. You can still choose to turn this off entirely or simply choose exactly which playlist that you want to play as well, if you'd like to. In my experience using the Picked For You feature, it's worked pretty darn well. And I would say when it nails it, it like really, really nails it. And then other times it's like, no, that's just not, that's just not what I was looking for at all. Um, one of the things I really wish was here though, is the ability to see the songs that played during the workout. And there's no place to see that, at least that I can find in a fitness app or on the phone or anywhere else where I can see exactly which songs are played on your watch. There is ability to see some songs if you start it on your phone, but that's not how I would 
do the watch because that's why I got the watch. Anyway, point is, I don't see any way to do that today. I would love to see that in the future uh, just so I know what I'm actually listening to. In any case, let's get to the last corner, which is the bottom right hand side. This is all things voice. Basically, any spoken alerts are going to come from this corner here. And that includes the workup buddy, which we'll dive into, as well as things like pace alerts, etc. All those pace alerts are the exact same as before. All those pace time distance type alerts are the exact same as before, except for the fact that they are now spoken in the workout buddy voice if you have that enabled. So let's talk about the workout buddy. Workout buddy there you can enable on a per sport profile basis. So that's the first kind of thing to know here. So if you want to on run, you can enable it there, but maybe not on outdoor cycling or whatever the case may be. You can turn it off on a per sport profile basis. Next, there's two different voices to choose from, voice one and voice two. Now those voices are modeled after two current Apple Fitness Plus trainers. There is Sam Sanchez for the women's voice. Way to get your workout started. And Jamie Ray for the men's voice. Way to get your workout started. Uh, now, I am seeing like a voice three listed in there occasionally. Way to get your workout started. Not sure what's going on there, but maybe down the road it'll be a bit more clear uh, with future beta. Now, when it comes to the sport profiles, that's been changing throughout this beta cycle. Right now on the screen is a list of ones that it shows enabled from. I didn't go through every single one of the nearly 100 sport profiles, but this is the combination of the ones that Apple have said it's been enabled on and some of the ones that I've discovered as well. For example, indoor cycling uh, is not on the list that Apple says, but does show on the device. You're really so showing up today. But then we have to get to the big four items that you need in order to make this work. Uh, number one, you must have a compatible Apple Intelligence phone uh, paired to this watch. So that would be any iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max series or any iPhone 16 device. And then I would assume any iPhone 17 if you're watching this in the September and beyond timeframe. Next, the phone must be within range of your watch. So phone has to be near your watch, within range, not like near, but within Bluetooth range at all times for Workout Buddy. You cannot leave your phone behind and go out for a run. Workout Buddy will not work. Three, you have to have internet connection, a live internet connection at all times for Workout Buddy to work. So in my case, I'm not trail running quite a bit. Some portions of those trails have no internet connectivity at all, and thus Workout Buddy will cease to function in all capacity, including just basic lap splits, will not announce at all or do anything. Those simply show up as a split in my watch like normal, but there's no audio splits anymore for those uh, in any way, shape, or form. And then number four, you must have your headphones connected. So this will not use a speaker on your watch, you must have headphones connected either to the watch or to your phone that's in turn connected to the watch uh, in order for this to work. Apple says they're doing that to protect your privacy of the data uh, when you're out running. I don't know. I feel like I wish I could just enable that. I don't particularly love running with headphones. That's just my thing. And I wish it was the option to opt in to using the speaker for all of my stuff because I don't care if someone knows my roof rings for the week uh, being announced on the watch. That's a choice that I think I should be able to make uh, as opposed to having to wear headphones all the time. Okay, so with those basics out of the way, I'm going to start a run. I'm going to show you a bunch of different snippets uh, from Workout Buddy on where it works well and, and not so much. So the way this works is that once you press the start button on that run, you're going to hear the music start to autoplay if you have that selected and then somewhere between the 8 and 16 second marker the music will duck down and the workout buddy voice will come in and here's what you'll hear nice work getting your run started this wednesday you've already closed your move and exercise rings today plus you've closed your move ring every day for the past 19 days Let's keep this positive momentum going. So that all sounds pretty good, right? And in general, it's pretty good. Except it said I've closed my move ring for the last 19 days, which is weird because on this day, I would have closed my move ring for 309 days, give or take straight. So a streak of 309 days. I don't understand why it would choose 19 days. And this is where we get to some of the problems where you have AI saying things that just don't make a ton of sense. Nonetheless, here's what happens when you go through a given split. You're picking up the pace. You covered that last kilometer in five minutes and 35 seconds at an average heart rate of 148 beats per minute. That's 12 kilometers total. So the last kilometer marker, 11 kilometers, it said, quote, you've been running for 47 minutes. Mind you, we were at 62 minutes at that point. Just like complete and total hallucination. In addition to get notifications for various milestones, as well as any manual splits that you take on the fly. So any laps that you have there. So for example, the exact second you close one of your rings, it'll go ahead and notify you uh, immediately. It just says, hey, you've closed your ring. Exercise ring closed. 
as well as any other random milestones along the way, including going through a 5K marker, uh, having a faster split than previous, et cetera. Now, once you finish up your workout, you're gonna get what's called the walk-off. Uh, so basically you've ended the workout, you've said you're gonna save it, uh, and then you're gonna see that summary screen on the watch, at which point it'll give you some stats about that. Here's one from one of my rides last week up in the mountain. That was an excellent four hour and 17 minute ride. You covered 67.8 kilometers with an average speed of 15.8 kilometers per hour and gained 1,759 meters in elevation. Your average heart rate was 131 beats per minute. With that, you crushed your move and exercise rings. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. That was a pretty good one, right? Um, this was obviously a ride in the mountains, so with a crap ton of elevation, thus a fair bit slower for our average speeds. It was also like 90 degrees, mid 30s Celsius, uh, so super hot and uh, slow going. But this is probably actually one of the best summaries that Apple has given. And in fact, in general, I find that the summaries that it gives the walk offs each time are pretty good. Way to crush that run. You ran 15 kilometers in one hour and 26 minutes averaging 5 minutes and 45 seconds per kilometer. Your average heart rate was 146 beats per minute, with a max of 177, and you climbed 253 meters. Plus, your average pace was faster than your last four weeks by nearly six minutes. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's instead the pep talk at the beginning where things seem to fall apart sometimes. For example, here's one from a couple days ago, uh, bringing the kids via cargo bike to summer camp, where it's starting to hallucinate on whether or not I close my rings at this point in the day. This is in the morning here, and I'll show you in a photo I took a couple seconds later after it told me this. Way to get your Friday started with an outdoor cycling workout. You've already closed your move ring today, and your seven day training load is well above your 28 day baseline. You've reached a total distance of 168 kilometers from all your cycling workouts this week. That's greater than your total at this point last week of 91 kilometers. Let's ride. Remember where it said I closed my move ring for the day? No, no, I hadn't. As you can see from the picture right here, here somewhere, I very much had not closed my brewing for the day. I had just woken up uh, and done absolutely nothing. And so this kind of stuff where it's just, it says things that aren't true. And I find generally speaking, it says things that aren't true in particular about your rings and the ring status the most. Uh, so there are cases where it's saying, hey, your, your move ring, your activity ring is closed and it's, it's not. Um, and, and that's, I don't really understand that. And one of the things that's interesting here is because of all the connectivity, right? So the Apple Watch itself, as we're kind of realizing now, there is no actual Apple AI on this watch today. Any of the current generation watches, maybe in the future there will be, undoubtedly in the future there will be, but none of these watches have that. Instead, it's leveraging your phone and in turn the cloud. And in particular on the cloud side, to generate these audio snippets, they're using their private cloud compute component. Uh, so basically it's sending some portion of your data up to their private cloud compute, it's doing that, and then bringing it back down again. And that's why you have to have the internet connectivity and make all this work. And so maybe something there isn't quite aligned, or maybe this just is simply like AI saying weird things, because saying that you've closed rings is sort of the opposite of like a data lagging issue, which then gets to some of the guardrails that Apple's put in place here for these generative insights. Uh, they've said they have indeed put guardrails around Workout Buddy, uh, so that it's primarily gonna give you positive feedback, uh, and in theory shouldn't say anything like negative or bad about the situation, right? And that's notable because it will tell you when your pace is like the fastest pace of the day, or fastest pace of the week or month or whatever the case is strong run you hit 9.2 kilometers in one hour and two minutes and burned 885 calories you also closed both your move and exercise rings you beat your average pace from the last four weeks by almost eight minutes Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. But won't ever say, yo, that was the slowest split that you've had yet today. You should just give up entirely on this run. As much fun as that would be. I think that would be, that would be awesome to be honest, but they're not doing that today. And when I talk to other companies in the industry here, the general gist of it is that they're all right telling you things that are obvious or maybe even verging on a little bit kind of dumb or silly uh, and not in a negative way, but like in a, yeah, of course that was what you should have said. Uh, but they're more scared of saying something that is super bad, super wrong or otherwise dangerous. Uh, and so they've all put these guardrails in place to keep those things from happening, which ultimately gets to kind of Apple's workout buddy and where it's gonna go from here. I think in general, I like the insights that it gives during the workouts and even before and after the workouts. Those are all good. I haven't had it say anything that's like 
horrific in nature, uh, so that's positive. At the same time, I don't see them being able to solve some of the hallucinating pieces because no one else can solve it in the industry yet, right? At the end of the day, AI is known for hallucinating, and that's being when it just makes up things. Uh, and Apple isn't known to be an AI leader at this point in time, thus I don't expect them to be the first one to solve the hallucinations. Still, it'll be interesting to see where this goes, uh, and I'm hoping eventually we can get it onto the watch itself without connectivity required, because for a lot of people that are going out for runs, they may not want to bring their phone with them, uh, and may not want to have cellular on their watch, etc., or be in cellular range, and that, I think, is where this becomes a little more interesting. Still, it's a good start for things, and of course, we still have a few more months until it gets out of beta and onto everyone else's watches, and certainly things will change between now and then. With that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.